kicked off. Oh, now it kicked on. <laughs> oh, it kicked on. Well, hi guys. <laughs> Hello. Hey. We got that in the spot we need it. I, I wasn't know. looking. I was scooched it back. And they give it a look. It says, it says three, two, one. Splash, and here it goes. <laughs> it's ready before we are. It's anxious to get this thing started. That's pretty good. We're talking today. This is uh, Sunday, May the 5th. And we're on a Colossians 4, verse 6 today. Let me get this thing set back here. I need to lower that. Well, you... I didn't get my camera set right before it kicked off. But that's all right. We'll take it like it is, right? Yeah. Are you going to be... No, you Are just you do your stuff now. I'll talk after so you don't have to worry about me getting started. I'm thinking of you, old darling, old buddy, oh, buddy girl. Hello, dear brothers, sisters, blessed, chosen, cherished, valued, and deeply loved by the happy God. Our verse today brings out the word seasoned with salt. What does that mean? From Unsearchable Riches, volume 50, pages 33 and 34, A. Enoch reminds us, Salt is a symbol of purity and incorruption, in contrast to leaven and honey, which are figures of corruption. I don't know why the honey. I, I can yeah, understand not the leaven, but the, I'm not honey. honey. I've not figured that out. Um, but that's from the Enoch uh, commentary. In the uh, no, the unsearchable riches. Yeah. Uh, corruption means for Israel under law, because God is incorruptible. Romans 1 23 everything representative of him or of Christ must be incorruptible scriptures tell us that salt is ideal mark 50 and Luke 14 34 oh, 950 and everyone will be salted with fire mark 949 for these are the two greatest enemies of corruption salt prevents it fire removes it hmm. Yeah. God is the creator and preserver, and his saints are the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13. Just as they are light which illuminates its darkness, also, so also are they the salt which hinders its corruption. Animals know the value of salt, and as Mike was saying, you know, um, the elephants will go searching for salt. Yeah, I've seen documentaries where they go for miles. They stretch out for days going for salt. They will sometimes travel great distances in order to reach salt licks. Where salt is scarce, it is highly prized and expensive. They used to use it for money. Hmm. In essence to health, and should have a place in every wholesome diet. Without salt, the average, as long as it's not iodized, Without salt, the average lifespan would be much shorter. Salt is also used to pre preserve food. My grandpa used to do that. Mm. Iodized. Not with iodized. No, not with iodized. He, uh... Speaking of iodized, I can't even... This comes to my mind. Oh, Lordy. That milk is the fastest liquid on earth. It's pasteurized before you know it. <laughs> Sorry. He said, I die, but Pastor, I die. Sorry. All right. Your word always being with grace, seasoned with salt. Colossians 4 6. It may seem strange to many of the saints that grace should never be used without seasoning. Of course, grace is such a rare and precious commodity that it is seldom that it seldom is seen in its pure, unadulterated form. Almost always it is leavened with honey. What is this? Hmm. What almost say? always almost always it is leavened by honey, which was forbidden to the Jews. Hmm. Honey was forbidden? I thought they used honey and manna on I have no idea. I was just okay. I have to look that look into that because I didn't know that. Hmm. And if it has no sweet taste for the flesh, few care to commend it. 
It is all too true that grace, when seasoned with honey, is seldom appreciated. And often condemned because it's not sugary enough. But when corrupted with sweetening, it is, it is applauded by all except God and spiritually minded saints who are in close communion with him. Hmm. Oh. The word season is interesting to look at. The Greek element for season is art. You... O equals quip. Yeah, R U R U O means equip. Yeah. In the in the uh, back of the concordant, you can find that. It is to provide some provide with something needed for proper operation. Salt is part of our equipment for service. Part of our equipment for service. Uh, Paul uses season as equipment here in in Second Timothy three. 16, 17, said all scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial for teaching, for exposure, for correction, for discipline in righteousness, that the man of God may be equipped, sent it out for every good act. And here we have the two variations of that stem part of the word used together, equipped and having been out equipped. Salt is an indispensable part of our equipment. Hence, it is essential that we should be able to recognize it. Paul exhorts us to be praying for wisdom so that we will know how to answer each one. Seasoned with salt among the Greeks was the emblem of wit. In Colossians 4, 6, the meaning seems to be that our conversation should be seasoned with love or grace in a way similar, similar to that in which we use salt in our food. It makes it wholesome and tasteful. So with our conversation. If it is not accord with love, it is flat, insipid, unprofitable, injurious. The spirit of love will make what it will make it what it should be, useful and agreeable and beneficial to mankind, to our fellow believers, right? This does not mean that our conversation is to be always, strictly speaking, religious, wherever it may be, any more than our food should be mere salt. But it means that whatever be the topic, whatever be the topic, the spirit of love should be diffused throughout it. As a salt in our food should properly be seasoned at all, whatever the food might be. Our interactions with others should always be with grace because discord is the tenderest part of our conversation with others. That makes a lot of sense. Um, the Debar translation has Colossians 4, 6. It says, Your word be always in grace, having been spiced with salt, perceiving how it is binding for you to answer each one. And the having been spiced is literally means having been adapted to the taste. So we read from the concordant literal and uh, in these studies and references. I'll leave these references down under the video so you can uh, and my email down there. You can get hold of Marcia and I down there if you want to. So your word always being with grace, seasoned with salt, perceiving how you must answer each one. Wherefore, putting off the faults, let each be speaking the truth with his associate, for we are members of one another. Are you indignant? Indignant means having a feeling of angry or, or something that has not been fair uh, or something that's been wrong. So, are you indignant and not sinning? Do not let the sun be sinking on your vexation. Uh, vexation is being agitated or irritated or, or troubled. So don't let the sun be sinking on your vexation, nor yet to be giving place to the adversary. You know, he'll get in our minds. we give him place, right? Let him who steals by no means still be stealing. Yet rather let him be toiling, working with his hands at what is good, 
that he may have to share with one who has need. Let no tainted word at all be issuing out of your mouth, but if any is good toward needful edification, that it may be giving grace to those hearing. And do not be causing sorrow to the Holy Spirit of God, by which you are sealed for the day of deliverance. Let all bitterness and fury and anger and clamor and calumny be taken away from you with all malice. Yet become kind to one another, tenderly compassionate, dealing graciously among yourselves, according as God also in Christ deals graciously with you. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, pitiful compassions, kindness, humility, weakness, patience, bearing with one another, and dealing graciously among yourselves. If anyone should be having complaint against any, according as the Lord also deals graciously with you, thus also you. Now over all of these put on love, which is the tie of maturity, and let the peace of Christ be arbitrating <clears throat> in your hearts, for which you are called also in one body, and become thankful. Let the word of Christ be making its home in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourselves in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to God and everything whatsoever you may be doing in word or in act do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God and everything whatsoever you may be doing in word or in act do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God the Father through him now we may not be despondent in ideal doing for in due season we shall be reaping, if we do not faint. Consequently then, as we have on occasion, we are working for the good of all, especially for the family of faith. During each prayer and petition, be praying on every occasion in spirit, being vigilant. What? Nothing. I'm just getting that now. Go ahead, start over. During every prayer and petition be praying on every occasion in spirit being vigilant also for it with all perseverance and petition concerning the, all the saints and for me that to me expression may be granted in the opening of my mouth with boldness to make known the secret of the evangel for which I am conducting an embassy in a chain that in it I shall be speaking boldly as I must speak now, here's our, his little frosting. Now, to him who is able to establish you in accord with my evangel and the heralding of Jesus Christ in accord with the relevant of the revelation. A revelation of the secret hushed in times of Ionian, let manifest now, yet manifested now and through prophetic scriptures according to the injunction of the Ionian God being made known to all nations for faith obedience. To the only and wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory for the eons of the eons. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That was Romans 16, 25 and 20 yep. through 27. That one wasn't part of the references. <clears throat> the rest of them were. The rest of them were. This section in, that was talking about, oh, we're only, uh, <clears throat> here in Ephesians, um, where it was, about the uh, being indignant. Looked up in the, uh, the Concord Commentary in the New Testament. It says here on, on page 292 for verse 26 of Ephesians 4. <clears throat> being indignant may also be rendered be indignant, but the context is against this rendering. It certainly is not a command to be angry, for we are distinctly charged to forego anger in this very chapter of Colossians 3.8. The next statement is evidently a, a parable, a parallel to this. In one, we have indignation. In the other, vexation. In both, we are exhorted not to carry what may be quite right and just to an extreme, which will make them injurious and sinful. It may be paragraphed or paraphrased, 
Do not let indignation be generated into anger. <laughs> do not cherish a grudge. Do not flare up. And do not let your resentment smolder. You know, we let things dwell in us and it, it becomes hurtful. You know, we hold things inside. Uh, you know, I've, I've been like, I've, I've uh, hurt people and not intended to. And I've, I seen where down the road, well, that was, what I said was hurtful. And it bothered me bad, you know, to a point. You know, it wasn't to you, it was somebody else, you know, others. And so it hurt me. I seen where they was, it had hurt them. I didn't realize what I'd done. And it was the words that I used in the wrong way. It, I didn't mean it the way it come out. But so that festered for a long time, over a year. And and finally was able to reconcile that, but it, you know, it hurt a lot to be able to know that you hurt a brother or hurt a sister in your words, uh, not thoroughly. Well, I hope not, I never have a brother or a sister. Well, that's with me. I hope yeah. I never do. You know, I had something that's not my intention. Uh, I purposely don't get involved in any arguments or dissensions of any kind. Uh, if I was to get involved in it. And if I was to win an argument or lose an argument, it's more than that. I lose respect for myself or I lose respect for somebody or they lose respect for me. Respect is a big thing. We earn that. Over time, it's earned. So if we win an argument or lose an argument, what have we really lost? We've lost a friendship with a brother or a sister. And what's that worth to keep that? In your mind, you know how what you know. God gives us our beliefs. There's nothing that we have that <laughs> the Scripture says on the left hand side. God gives us life, breath, and all. Life, breath, and all. It's in that book right there, that blue yep. book. On the left hand side, in Acts. So that includes our thoughts. Everything comes from God. So we are in our mind in this understanding where he wants us at this time in life. He wants to say that my way of looking at things is correct. And he wants to say that Marsha's way of looking at things is correct. God knows. He's the one that got us where we're at. Marsha's come a long ways. In my mind, she's came a long ways from where uh, when I was first putting these together. And she's understanding more than, than ever before. And so am I. We're learning together. So I'm still. So if I say or do something towards a brother or sister that is out of out of character, uh, you know, come to me privately and let and let me know, because it's never my intention to hurt anybody by my words. I don't try to say things to prove a point, because what good does it do if I lose a uh, fellowship, if I lose a friend? You know, uh, we're compa we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Our lives are hid with Christ and God. We have a celestial realm with our brother Christ. We're a celestial realm. And we are, together, we are going to, rec to reconcile all creation back to our Father. It's Christ leading us. He's the head of it. So, it's called working in love and to be loving one another. Scripture says on the right side, being true in love we should maybe be making all grow together in Christ. It's on the right hand side. So anyway, just a few thoughts that I was going through this that comes to my, my mind as I go through this. And uh, it's really neat how God opens our minds to things. The eyes of our heart having been enlightened. That's on the right hand side. Top. But anyway, I love you guys. Anything you want to say? While you're here? No. <laughs> well, we love you guys, and I appreciate you hanging out with us. Yep. We'll talk to you later. Later. See you tomorrow.